Today, I sit down with Alish Pospisil, co-founder of European Coffee Trip, the online coffee media empire with a YouTube channel of around 290,000 subscribers, at least at the time of this recording. Alish just happened to be passing through Barcelona on a quick filming trip, so I took advantage of his visit to record this podcast episode with him at my home. Of course, we made some espressos together using the Pico Presso from Mokako, which is the main sponsor of this podcast. For a bit more context on Wakako, it is a brand of portable coffee brewers that are completely hand powered. All you need is hot water and coffee, of course. And I've been using all of their gear, including hand grinders, scales, their espresso makers, pour over brewers. So it only made sense to share this brewing device with a fellow coffee traveler, even if it was just on my patio. With that, Alish Pospisil. It was amazing. Thank you for inviting me oh, yeah. to see your uh, apartment in here in Barcelona. While I make my coffee, we already made you a quick spro inside. Thank why you. don't you tell us why you're here? What brings you to Barcelona on this trip? And yeah, sum it up for us. What What are you doing here? Okay. Yeah. So um, uh, we we came uh, to film with uh, Three Marks Coffee Roasters, local local coffee roastery, and we came for three days we film uh, two days ago we film in, in their roastery and t yesterday we film in their coffee shop and the idea was to show their story film their story capture the story and this project and this video is sponsored by cropster which is the uh, the creator of the software that helps with the roasting but also with the cafe and cafe quality and so on so we on their example we want to also show how they use it and how they how it helps them to make a better coffee either roasted coffee for their customers or served or brewed coffee inside of the shop so so that was the, the reason and it was always uh, it's always a nice excuse to visit more cafes we that we already feature or even that we don't feature in our apps and guides yet and meet people we know <laughs> you know from the past <laughs> let's cheers here yeah cheers. thanks for coming um, right now we are both sipping on a really nice espresso from Brazil, from Deterra, but roasted here in Barcelona from another roastery. So speaking of, you know, new cafes, new roasteries, uh, I know that you you feature them on, uh, you've, you've featured them before on, on the website and on, on the app, and if not, probably soon. Um, we do, we do, but I, I haven't had a chance to visit them yet or, or meet the, the founder. So, you know, tell me something about them. What, would I, what, I, what should I know? Uh, what would, yeah, sure. Would yeah, I'll give you, a, give you a quick brief on it, but basically, yeah, so Abyss Coffee Roaster is what we're drinking right now. Uh, Pear is the is the founder. He's from Canada. But we met here in Barcelona back in 2016, actually shortly after I met you, mm -hmm. uh, which I'll explain in just a second. But, yeah, we, we met here. He had wanted to start a coffee roastery, and he finally launched uh, last October. So I've been kind of uh, brewing up a lot of his coffees, bringing it around to different shops around Barcelona, too, just to kind of get the word out a little bit mm -hmm. and... Um, and so, yeah, it's nice to be able to brew it up here at home, pretty much just as you would have it in the cafe, you know, using the, the Pico Presso, as I've mentioned in, in previous episodes. Of course, Wilcock was a sponsor of this podcast, so it's nice to, to be able to brew that with someone, brew that with yeah, you. And, and, and thanks for showing me. I mean, I, I've seen it definitely on your videos, but I, I haven't had a chance to actually use it and see this in action. So it was uh, very educational for me. <laughs> Here's the right place to do it. So... Speaking of your YouTube channel, I did a bit of a deep dive uh, okay. while researching for our quick chat today. I just I just laughed at the at your caption back in must have been around 2015. P.S. Sorry for our English. It will be better next time. We <laughs> promise. Well, I hope it's a little better now. <laughs> I can testify. I mean, everyone listening, you you know it's it's really great. But that's what I think is also so precious about our our coffee community is that no one cares like it's it, you know going across cultural boundaries and people from all over and i know that there's been barista competitors world class barista champions who had to memorize their script mm -hmm. word for word just to just to compete without actually speaking uh speaking english but um no i just <laughs> thought that was that was that was cool and you know yeah. I'm, I'm sure there was so many other things you learned <laughs> along the way besides uh language but true you know i love what you said earlier about the fact that you really wanted to, I'm sure, it, I'm sure it's still, that feeling is still there now, but in the beginning, you wanted to explore the unknown places around Europe mm -hmm. a little bit, maybe, you know, 
maybe not considered the underdog, but the places that are less explored, less known, helping to shift people's perspectives about, you know, I remember one of your er earlier videos was, it might have even been the first video mm -hmm. that I mentioned earlier, greetings from Wroclaw, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah, like, Wroclaw, yeah. I, I've never been there. I'm sure many people have <laughs> never heard of this city in, in Poland, but um, I'm curious if there are any specific memories that were the most impactful or kind of changed your perspective in some way. Yeah, I think we had the, we had the, the 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 greatest memory was in in Poznan where we stayed at the couch surfing and we were driving from Warsaw to Poznan by car and and kind of in the middle of the of the on you know of the of the trip you know we we get a message from our couch surfing host and she was really excited about the project and said yeah I'm I'm so excited I like you know, kind of the business development and PR so I contacted a few of the the media local media you know that and they are interested so basically the next day when we woke up before we had the I think even before we had the coffee we already have like one or two interviews with the with the uh, local television and 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 local radio in, in in the first coffee shop and they were so excited there are like some kind of like the coffee you know experts <laughs> for them you know that they travel you know from from Czech Republic you know to to Poland to to find the best coffee and uh, that was just like you know absurd you know <laughs> for us uh, but also very very funny and inspiring I think uh after that, we we extended our our stay in po Poznan, and and we met another another amazing people. We organized some kind of like the coffee documentary screening, you know. So yeah, and that was just kind of like the whole trip was like very <laughs> very fun, inspiration, and and the the the, the feedback and the energy we got from the the Polish coffee scene was so such amazing that we decided to continue. So I think that was just. Yeah, this kind of the trip. So that was early days. It was uh, 2014. So I, I, I told you, like, basic our idea was, like, we do just kind of city by city in around the Czech Republic, which we have an advantage in Europe. Like, we have like quite you know beautiful cities and and countries quite close to each other. So we could travel by by car, uh, for for quite little money, and and so that was just kind of first, I think, first three months kind of period. Yeah. But it stands as a testament. It reminds me a little bit of my my travels, as I mm -hmm. mentioned, the bike trip, but also, you know, going to a coffee farm in Mexico or going to visit you know, coffee farms in Indonesia or, or, or anywhere, really. It's really about getting out there, right? Mm -hmm. And in and, and your case, you wouldn't have had that opportunity to be maybe in the, the local news. You know, it's not global news, but it's it's a push for you that you wouldn't have had that opportunity if you didn't just go out and try. It, just go out and... And you know, see what was possible, and not only that, but putting your energy out there, right? Yeah. You contacted, you just happened to contact the right co uh, couch surfing host. Um, I remember doing that too, like contacting different people on my on my bike trip across Spain. I didn't know anything; there was nothing online. Yeah. I did a I did a bunch of searches. I couldn't find any coffee roasters uh, on that route, but there were. It's just you had to go and just see it for yourself. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's such a great example. You developed an app within the last few years, uh, European Coffee Trip app. Uh, tell us a little bit of what that experience was like, and I, I think the motivation is is clear. But I'm curious, you know, what the what the early early days of developing that is. And actually, the, the most important part was actually building our own database and or inserting the the cafes we either visited at the beginning, and then later when we kind of open it up also for kind of suggestions and contributions so but we still need to curate it and and uh, find information and and get some photos and communicate with the, with the cafe so that was actually even more complicated or more important actually for for the the development um maybe if you could break it down into like three phases of developing the app i'm mm -hmm. sure it's a lot more complicated than that but three main mm -hmm. steps that maybe someone else who is curious about developing their own app, either within coffee or, or within another passion of theirs, um, maybe you can break it down a little bit. What were some of the mm -hmm. steps and also some of the challenges that you yeah. had along the way? I'm not sure if the app is like the, yeah, the, the app is particular thing that is just like the, 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 maybe even the interface. But I mean, for us, it was just like the, the I think the beginning of the first phase was like that something that is very difficult to scale, which was the traveling and meeting people, which is like difficult to scale, but you know, it's, it's difficult. So not that many people would do it. So that's your advantage. 
and, uh, and builds the connection that you need uh, or network that you need for, for anything, especially if it's in the small niche. So, so that's, uh, uh, that's, I think, the important part. Like, yeah, like, I mean, I, I can, you, you, it's not that sexy as, as just kind of like trying to kind of outsource a developer or anything, but it's, I think that's, that's important. And, and this kind of learning and, and being in the field helps you to understand a little bit better the, the scene or the, the field that you are trying to explore. Uh, so I think that was the first part. Then the second part, I guess, or the second step was uh, realizing that uh, the scene or the you know the network is growing so so fast. So so we wouldn't be able to just two of us, or even if we have more people, like you know, visit all the all the other places uh, ourselves. And so we kind of like the turn it into the sort of a database with the website, and we kind of open it for suggestions uh, from from our readers from our audience so that we become more like the just kind of explorer or like the kind of just content creators who are there and in the field but then kind of curating the platform and and uh, then i guess the next step would be kind of like maybe the scaling it kind of or make it easy for people to use it and and, and solving even more problem because as the number of cafe is growing so it's a little bit less about finding like you know, especially in, in the biggest cities like Barcelona, it's not about like finding the, the coffee to drink, but like the coffee or cafe with particular uh, features like that you are looking for. Do they have a filter coffee? Do they serve breakfast? Or do they have a Wi-Fi so you can work from there? So that's kind of like for us, the next step was collecting more data, building more like the tools and platforms that that can help us to grow and eventually also the monetization part of the of the of, of the part. So. I think these would be kind of the three steps of the for us. Do you can you share a little bit of the the monetization strategy? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, because that, that's always. Uh